Good morning. Um, we are going to discuss chemical equilibrium. All right, this will be an introduction. I'm going to share my screen. Okay. So let's just do a brief introduction to the concept of chemical equilibrium. All right. What we have here is a process that does not go in the forward direction and stop. We have a process that goes in the forward direction and then simultaneously is also going in the reverse direction. Okay, think of it as like a bridge where people are always, you know, let's say that you've got a bridge that connects New York to, I don't know, Brooklyn. Or you know, Brooklyn to Manhattan? Is there something like that? Um, I might be totally wrong, right? But there's a bridge, okay? And it connects it and cars can drive over this bridge, right? And people are always leaving Manhattan and going to Brooklyn, right? People are always like, oh, I need to go over the bridge and I need to go this way. Right, so such that we just lost some of our population here, right? However, at the same time, there are always people leaving Brooklyn and going back to Manhattan, right? So what we have here is a process that is occurring both in the forward and the reverse direction simultaneously, okay? When these two rates, when the forward, the rate of the forward, hold on, let me, let me, let me just make that look better. When rate forward reaction equals rate reverse reaction, equilibrium has been established, okay? And to be honest with you, there is not much more to say. There is a little bit, and we're gonna look at some graphs, okay? The equilibrium has been established. When the rate of people leaving Manhattan going to Brooklyn is equal to the rate of people leaving Brooklyn and going to Manhattan, equilibrium has been established. What does that mean? That means the rate of the forward reaction is equal to the rate of the reverse reaction. What does it not mean? Chemical equilibrium does not mean that concentrations are equal, okay? Common misconception, concentrations are not equal at equilibrium. Okay, rates are equal. That should be capitalized at equilibrium. Concentrations are constant. That means no longer changing at equilibrium. Okay, got a little bit messy over there, didn't it? They're no longer changing at equilibrium. Okay, these three things right here are really important to understand. The concentrations are not equal. The rate of the forward is equal to the rate of the reverse. Because the rates are equal, the concentrations have stopped changing. There are 94,000 people here. There are 80,000 people here. But every time four people leave, four people return. So even though there's dynamic motion, it is called a dynamic process because there is constant change. However, 
the concentrations are constant. All right? They are no longer changing. At that point, you have reached equilibrium. Okay? Let's look at what that would look like by going to our PowerPoint and um, looking at some pictures. All right? Notice some of the keywords here. Dynamic, right? That means that we have processes continuing, equal rates, no observable change. It appears as though nothing is occurring, right? The main part of this topic, 7.1, has to do with graphs, concentration graphs, okay? Let's look at this picture and just diagrams are always good. In a saturated solution, that means there's a lot of solute, the rate of solvation is equal to the rate of precipitation. What does that mean? This is our solid. I imagine here, this is our solid. Um, that's dissolved and we constantly have, um, so this is the solid and these I imagine are the dissolved particles. Notice that particles become solids as solids become dissolved. Particles, ions, aqueous become solids and then um, solids become aqueous solids become aqueous, aqueous become solids. So there's constant motion, but it doesn't appear as though there is, all right? These rates are equal, right? Three left, three returns. Therefore, at equilibrium, right? And that at should be right here, I'm sorry. Therefore, at equilibrium here, the rate of dissolution is much larger than the rate of precipitation. So we've got a guy leaving, 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 we've got a guy leaving. This, this is not at equilibrium, right? Eventually, this system will obtain equilibrium unless it's open, right? because then the water will evaporate and all this will be left as a solid, right? So we're particularly talking about closed systems here where the water can't evaporate, right? And this itself, that water evaporating here and causing vapor pressure and then condensing is also an equilibrium process. That is going to constantly happen and it's going to happen once you close that, this process right here is going to establish equilibrium to where there's a constant concentration of water vapor here and a constant amount of liquid particles in terms of volume or however, you know, numbers of molecules here but there will be constant evaporation. Um, and then from there, there will be condensation. So you've got lots of equilibrium systems occurring, okay? Right there. This is exactly what I was talking about a minute ago, the evaporation and condensation of water. Notice closed system, because if you open the system, it's all going to go out, right? the system's too big. Yeah, it'll get an equilibrium with the rest of the uh, atmosphere, right? So our, we don't have a system. The system has become the, uh, the, the whole, everything around you, right? So initially, let's hear, so we just closed this lid, right? We just closed this lid. Initially, we're going to have most evaporation, right? because all we have here is H2O liquid, right? And what we don't have yet is any H2O gas. So we're going to form that, right? And what we would see in a graph here would be our 
products decreasing, right? This would be my H2O liquid, right? This would be a concentration. And I would see the amount of it go down. And at the same rate, I would see the amount of my water vapor increase, right? To concentrations. Um, this is a one-to-one -one mole ratio. So we have a similar slope here in terms of our change in concentration over time, okay? And then we would see that right here is where equilibrium must have become established, right, at this time. Because at this time, right, is where we have that constant concentration. We see that the concentration is not changing. Concentration no longer changing. Both have the same concentration. Okay, so that's what a concentration versus time graph would look like. Um, now you see here, this is your PowerPoint, does not mean that the concentrations are equal, right? Common misconception. Um, but the concentrations are fixed. They're no longer changing. Um, this can be related to partial pressures too, right? Partial pressures will remain constant because concentrations are constant. No observable changes, but we do have um, constants dynamic. We've got the forward and the reverse processing continuing. Um, Once again, we see that at this point, equilibrium has been established. It took 60 seconds to establish equilibrium. At equilibrium, our concentrations are no longer changing, right? And that's your concentration, and we see that it is constant. Um, notice here, we've got two of these graphs up above, and they reference this reaction here. Um, notice that there are two uh, sulfur dioxides for every one oxygen. Notice that both of those are our um, reactants, obviously. So let's relate that to the graph. Um, let me get a different color here. The two sulfur dioxides are right here. Okay. And notice, let me get there, the oxygen let me do a different color, is here, right? Oh, shoot, y'all. The oxygen is here, and the um, sulfur dioxide is here. So what you need to notice is this would be a concentration versus time. The concentration of both reactants decrease, and look at um, the rate, SO2 at two times the rate, right? Because um, of that two to one. So you see that is also referenced here in the graph. And then notice that the two SO3 is being produced right here. Let's get a um, blue. The 2SO3 is being produced, and notice that the rate of the um, SO2 and the SO3 are the same, and that would be due to that 2 to 2, that 1 to 1 ratio, okay? So you can see mole ratios in this concentration versus time graph. And you see that at this point, when all concentrations have stopped changing, they are now constant, we have reached equilibrium, okay? Um, notice also that in the end, I mean, over here, we start with no products and we just have reactants, all right? Um, practice problem, at what point on the graph is equilibrium established? Uh, well, it looks like that would be around here. And there's your 15 seconds. What happens at 20 seconds? Um, well, it looks like at 20 seconds, we must have added something. We must have added some carbon monoxide, right? And then it had to reestablish equilibrium. 
right? So you see it, we changed the equilibrium system and everything changed and then it re-established equilibrium. So we'll be talking about stuff like that using some numbers involved, all right? Um, once again, the same um, concentration versus time, okay? Um, I, the only thing I don't see here is uh, the rate versus time graph. Um, I wanted to show you one of those, but I don't see one. Actually, I do have one if you want to hang in there with me real quick. Um, equilibrium graphs. So look here, there's a rate, right? There's a difference between the concentration versus time, right? A concentration versus time. Last time, zero products, the products increase. We have all reactants, reactants decrease. Notice that this looks like it would be a one-to-one -one ratio of, um, in, this, in the stoichiometry because these rates are equal. You know, the, the slope is equal. Also notice, what was I going to say? Oh, that the initial rate is also um, faster, right? As that slope decreases, um, right? Why? Because we have more particles present initially, right? So we have a quicker reaction. So, you know, that has more to do with kinetics, but there's no reason to not mention it, I feel. Um, and then we see at, at equilibrium, the concentration here, once again, they are not equal, but they are constant. At our rate versus time graph, notice that the rate of the um, forward, right, slows down the rate of the reverse slows down. They get to be the same, or the rate of the reverse actually speeds up, right? Sorry. Um, they get to be the same uh, to where we have the same exact rate, and that is when we are at equilibrium. Okay. Hopefully, you get what I'm trying to say. <laughs> Stop. All right. I hope you got that.